You ever start a project thinking, this is gonna be a breeze, only to find yourself halfway through thinking, what the hell am I getting myself into? I thought slapping the Z-axis on my CNC plasma cutter was gonna be a quick win, but instead I ended up knee deep in wires and questioning my life choices. So today I'm gonna show you the mess I got into and how I finally got this thing up and running. Oh yeah. To get started, I had to remove the electrical control box. One of the biggest requests in the comments is how do you do the electrical? And to be honest, I would love to walk and talk you guys through this as I'm making it, but you guys have to remember, this is my first time putting everything together as well. That being said, I don't know if I feel comfortable teaching someone how to do something if I've never done it either. I can promise you this, I will definitely promise that I may or may not maybe make a video and plans that go into depth on teaching and showing the electrical side of things. These past videos have been more for documentation sake and holding myself accountable to continue with my business endeavors because the best way to learn for me is by doing. And one way to make sure I keep doing is by involving other people like Whoa, you. And you guys have lunch. been nothing but supportive and oh, I appreciate yeah, all of that. So right thanks. So I have probably close to another eight hours to work on this. So now it begins the painstaking process of trying to solder all these connectors together. 3D printed parts came out. I only have white. The whole rest of the machine is black, but please get it, bro. This is probably my least favorite part about this whole project that I've been having to The wires are so small, I have no flux. So the wires take forever to heat up. And everything's so tiny, it's hard to hold on to. It's hard to hold on to. Once I hooked up the small driver and the NEMA stepper and verified that everything was working smoothly, I began the very tedious task of rerouting and soldering new wiring harnesses through the drag chains. I had to do this because I originally was going to just hang all the wires from a rod like everyone else does, but I couldn't live with myself if I did that. Everything just looks so unprofessional and I take a lot of pride in my work. There's one thing to say and always keep his pride! Not considering the fact I also have way too many wires to hang because of all the add-ons like my second Y-axis motor, and now the Z-axis, and eventually limit switches. Once I had the majority of the wiring harnesses soldered together, I had to connect everything up, which involved drilling new holes for the female panel mount aviation connectors. Hey, where could I get that fancy connector? Check the video description. Okay, I got Z-axis in, Z-probe, and one of the X limit switches just to test it out. Dude, this is a freaking mess. You can see I tried at the beginning to keep everything nice and neat. Dude, some of these things probably could have been a little bit more planning involved. I've been in a rush. It's currently 4 o'clock, 4.30, 5 o'clock. I've been at this all day, man. Okay, we got a lot of wires going. Pro tip, label all of your wires before routing them through the drag chain. I'm just plugging it in here for a test run. That one still works. Oh, that's not good. I think I may have the wires backwards on this one. Pretty much what I did is just messed up the polarity on one of the holes. I just gotta flip flop these two then. Good, let's try that again. Okay, left and right works good. Ow. Damn it! Oh, now they're going backwards with each other. It's racking back and forth. This one is correct, this one is not. So I still need to flip them, I guess. Okay, I got it. I just needed to swap and play around with the poles on the motor a little bit. Not bad. Now I'm gonna plug in the Z-axis and see if that works. This one's really nice because it actually has just a clip connector instead of having to solder every freaking thing together. Okay, I put some tape on there so we can see it. And what do you know, I'm not getting anything. Why am I not getting anything? Oh, I got the poles hooked up backwards. I can feel there's current going to it. It's like vibrating a little bit, but... Oh! So close yet, so far away. Oh yeah! We got movement! All right, now I just got to tidy everything up and buy a bunch of the fasteners for the 3D printed parts and stuff. Okay, now that I got all the electrical work done, I can start working on the actual Z-axis assembly. This is kind of how it's going to go. These two rods I'll have to cut down because I ordered them long. Oh, I love how that brass nut just falls down there. 
I'm on my way to the Home Depot, 45 minutes away, just to pick up some of these M3 bolts because no hardware store in the area has them. Maybe I would have been better off just ordering them off at Amazon or something, but I didn't feel like waiting. I got the time to work on this now, so I guess we're spending 45 minutes. Last night, I tried cutting out a bunch of these brackets for the Z-axis, but as you could see, one of them turned out pretty decent, but after I got to the third or fourth one, I was like, hmm, I should probably check the consumables on that. And since I tried to run that customer order piece and it completely ate everything, this is what happened to the consumables. Whatever this piece is, it actually looks okay, so I might be able to use that again, but this cap, that thing's toasted. So I put a new one in, two new ones in, which are my last two. And I believe that's what it, no, this is what it did. So now I'm running into a problem where the torch is firing, or the torch is actually moving before it fires. If it didn't do that, everything else would have been pretty good. So what I am gonna to try today is just increasing the pierce delay, because I don't have a feedback, or I don't have anything capable of doing a feedback yet. And what I mean by that is some sort of feedback loop where once the torch fires, there's like voltage or a switch that connects and then it lets the machine know that the torch is actually on, then it'll give the signal to, to move to the next line in the G-code. To my knowledge, I, I don't know how to do that yet, but we could, but for now, I'm just increasing the pierce delay. Hopefully that doesn't interfere too much with quality. So we're gonna go ahead and try that. Still did it. Okay, I figured it out. I accidentally, inside of the parameters of GRBL, I accidentally had laser mold enabled. For some reason, it was just continuously going. So once I turned that off, everything worked. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the pierce delay back to the recommended 0.3 seconds, and we're gonna see what happens. That works pretty good. I think the pierce delay still needs to be a little bit longer. And I noticed the direction of travel is going this way. What I, the hyperterm manual recommends is that the best quality cut is on the right side in relation to the direction of travel. So in the software, I'm gonna have to change that to make it come this way. So I might go try that. Looks like I have room for one more. Olsen. In addition to setting the Boolean laser enable to false, I drastically turned down the machine acceleration. Originally, I had it set to about a thousand millimeters per second because I really, really liked the speed, but it turns out the machine could not handle it. So after some testing, I settled on about 250 and that gave me a good medium between speed and quality. Looks good, except for the design, of course. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Not half bad. I had a little problem right here. That part was directly right on the slat. Basically just welded it to it. Here we go. What are you doing? All right, let's talk about the Z-axis assembly. I used the plans from JD's Garage because they were readily available and I didn't really feel like redesigning everything from scratch. Let me tell you, this has easily been one of the most frustrating parts of this entire project. And believe me, I'm trying to be super respectful and understanding here because I get it. Freaking Baron came out. Everybody's trying their best. If you're going to release a product, especially something like this, the design really needs to be fully worked out before you start selling it. Now, I know I shouldn't expect much, especially at this low of a price point. Freaking A! I just popped some of the balls out. <laughs> I was just, you know, kind of hoping everything would fit together a little better than it did. So rather than ramble on, let me just go through the main issues I ran into. First off, the 90 degree overhang where the linear bearings are supposed to be pressed in. Yeah, that doesn't allow for a press fit. 
Instead, it just ends up being a giant mess when you 3D print it. Maybe I could add in supports. Then there's the issue with the micro switch. The holes didn't even line up properly. I mean, it's one thing to have a minor misalignment, but this was off by so much. I ended up having to drill out the holes on the actual micro switch and then just all of the hardware in general, especially the bearings. They're so cheap. So in the end, I was able to make it work, but it took a lot more time, effort, and frustration than it probably should have. Again, I'm trying to stay super respectful and understanding here. I know the price point is low and I didn't expect perfection. But I think it's fair to expect a little more refinement in the design before it hits the market. All of that being said, I really can't complain too much. Everything works and I'm way better off with the Z-axis than without it. I just have to figure out the software side of things. Just programmed the first test run for part with the Z-axis, so we're going to see how that goes. Plasma cutter off, it should still work. Um, it looked like it worked, but it's dragging. So the issue was I did not have my torch offset set within the sheet cam post. That being said, so I'll just basically walk you through what the postcode told me to do. You're gonna grab a sheet of paper and jog the Z axis down until the limit switch clicks. Click there. Now I'm gonna set my zero, and then I'm gonna move up until the paper comes out. So my number is 0.313. I don't wanna make this too lengthy but I'm using sheet cam and a separate CAD software to generate my DXFs and create CNC programs. It turns out all of the generic GRBL posts in sheet cam don't work with my current setup. So I spent hours trying to find a solution and I found this holy grail of a gentleman. This guy has been making different versions of the sheet cam posts and it turns out his most recent is exactly what I was looking for. To try and avoid any frustration with future people, I'm going to link this form in the video description. Hopefully that helps helps because it was the only way I actually got my machine up and running. I got the freaking ground cable again. This is a customer order piece and was the first piece I cut out with the new Z-Access. Without it, I would not have been able to do this. It's nice to look back at your hard work and be able to be proud of something. This piece was just about at the max of my cutting area. It was about 50 inches wide and I think it turned out great. Let's go! It cut all the way through. I don't know if you guys saw, but I had to hold it, started to warp and come up. It touched in the middle and not the high spot. So I was holding it down with my hand as the torch was cutting, and that seemed to be doing the trick, but I think it cut all the way through everything, and it actually looks kind of crispy. For once in my life, something worked. If this gets you guys as excited as I am, go ahead and take that first step. You'll never know where you'll end up. I documented all of my work. And if you'd like to check out where I started, check out these other videos. Thanks for watching.